In this lecture, we'll look at the basic computer hardware. A computer is essentially something that computes. So it's something that can execute commands and compute and does calculations. So computers are in a lot of the different gadgets and consumer electronic goods that we might see on a day-to-day -day basis. So calculators, digital alarm clocks, cars, TVs, all of these are computers or have computers in them. There are general purpose computers and there are purpose built ones. The general purpose ones are the ones that we may associate if we hear the term computer, which are the desktops, laptops, smartphones, tablets, and so on. So a lot of these computers run either, especially the PCs and Macs, they run Windows, Mac OS, or Linux operating systems. And these are generally what we associate with the term computer. Now we also have the purpose-built ones, like the calculators, digital alarm clocks, GPS units, TVs, and so on. The purpose-built ones can do only one or two functions, and they do that really well. That's what they're built for. The general purpose ones are able to do multiple functions, and we can even write code and program to do more. A modern computer consists of hardware, operating system, and applications. The computing process itself consists of an input, processing, and output. Input is done through the input devices, and the processing is done by the CPU and the processing units in the, in the computer, and then the output is given by the output devices. The typical input devices are keyboards, mice, touchpad, digital pens, microphones, and so on. Output devices are things like printers, displays, your monitors, and speakers. So here you can see that more clearly in terms of what the input items are, what the output devices are, and some of these can even overlap and they can be they can do both input and output. So here you can see that the touch screen is both input and output because you can send it commands by touching and then you can also get the output on the display. So let's look at the parts of a computer. So the one on the left is a classic, really old computer. So here you have a monitor, keyboard, mouse, a modem, a printer, a few disk drives, some memory and speakers. So we can see that some of these items are redundant and they don't exist anymore. So on the right hand side, this is a Dell Optiplex desktop. So this is one of the most common computers that, that is used in offices today. So this is what's been used in most of the banks. So if you have a bank like Citigroup that has two to 300,000 employees worldwide, so they have over 100,000 of these same Dell machines in their offices worldwide. So you can see that a lot of the, the parts have not really changed that much. They just became more modern. So you still have the monitor, keyboard, mouse, and the tower, similar to the, the traditional one. And it's just that the network adapter is built into the, the tower. And you see that the monitor has become from CRT to an LCD. And you don't see the, the drives anymore. You do have the drives, so and you still have the drives or at least a slot for an expansion drive if you need. Now let's look at the tower more closely. So on the right hand side, you can see the high level parts. So you can have a CD, DVD drive or a writer a floppy or a card reader if you need and then you have the hard disks which can be a, a hard drive or an SSD then you have a motherboard that holds all of these different components together like RAM, video card, sound card, the processor and the chipset. Then you have the power supply unit that actually provides power to all these different components and all of these are enclosed in a case. Now if you look at the back of the tower you can see a lot of these same items. In each, at the top, you can see the power supplies, cooling fan, and the, the on-off switch and the power connector for the whole computer. Then you can see a panel of different ports, and all of these ports are protruding from the motherboard. You have a case cooling fan, 
expansion slots at the bottom. So these expansion slots are for expansion cards that might be video cards or sound cards, a modem or a network card, and they all go through the PCI or PCIe connection on the motherboard to talk to the CPU. If you look at a laptop, you see a lot of the similar parts, but they're all crammed together and combined into one unit. So you have the display and your keyboard, your touchpad or the mouse, and uh, you have the, the tower portion of it is hidden below the keyboard. And that's where you have the, the CPU, motherboard, the hard drive, and the video card. Now the ports are on the side usually, or on the back. So you can see that there are USB ports, your uh, mouse or additional expansion ports, video or monitor ports, and so on. And inside a tablet, there are even fewer parts because things are even crammed together a lot more and it's more for a different use case than a, a desktop or a laptop. So you can see that a lot of the space is occupied by the battery and the display unit and you can see that the main chipset is actually pretty small. There's also a wireless networking device, a camera, so you can have conversations or do FaceTime. And there are also speakers and plug in your mic if you need to. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.